Hi everyone, it's Bert from Season Gaming and I'm back with another video on how to upgrade your controller with magnetic thumbsticks. Now this is going to be mainly for a standard Xbox One controller. This goes back to the original version which is considered a standard Xbox controller. They have kind of upgraded to the Xbox One S controller which is now more common which you kind of see out in the wild. And we're also going to be adding magnetic thumbsticks to the PlayStation 4 controller. Now if you want to jump straight to those sections of the video we will have some jumping areas too. You can also see it in the description. You can jump straight to there. That'll take you straight to the installation of how to do that for the PlayStation 4 controller and how to do that for the standard Xbox controller. Now I do want to talk about the way you can buy these little kits. For the PlayStation 4 controller, you can only upgrade the sticks, not the actual D-pad as well. They come in a little bitty bag that looks like this, which just comes with the small stick, the medium sized stick, and the tall stick. They come in a mix between concave and convex actual sticks. And I will zoom into those when we actually do the installation for the PlayStation 4 controllers. For the Xbox One controller, you're gonna be able to upgrade your sticks and the D-pad. Now, the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna kind of wanna emulate what the Xbox One Elite controller gives you. Now that's gonna give you the option to remove and put the sticks back on on both of your sticks between three different sizes like I just mentioned, and also the D-pad, which is gonna be coming with a standard D-pad like this and a kind of round one that I'll show you in just a second. The Xbox controller one comes in a bigger kit that looks like this. So you have your, your tall sticks, you have the round um, the sticks at the top and the short ones, and this right here is the additional D-pad stick that it comes with. It's a round one. Once again, I will zoom into these and spend more time when we're doing the actual installation. Now there is a caveat here, and it's gonna be specifically for the Xbox controller. They do cost somewhere, the kits I should say, cost somewhere between $20 and $30 if you also want to upgrade the D-pad. Now it's important that you buy the right kind of magnetic sticks because if you buy the real cheap kits from China, they're gonna have simply a magnetic stick and those do cause interference with the left trigger. When you're clicking down with that new magnetic stick you're upgrading to, it's gonna hit the magnet that actually goes to the left trigger as well. The proper sticks that you want to get have a little protective covering in the back of the stick and I'll actually show that to you once again when we zoom into the installation of the Xbox One controller installation for the magnetic sticks. The PlayStation 4 controller, that upgrade's only going to cost you around $10 to $12 and that'll be really cheap because all you're buying is just the sticks. There's no special magnets in the PlayStation 4 controller sticks, so it's really easy just to buy a whatever pack. Now I've seen these come in different colors, blue, green, black, I think I've even seen purple a few times. So they're pretty easy, get them off eBay, you can get them off Amazon. If you have the patience and want to wait for the Chinese stuff that you can get, it'll take you about two to three weeks to get, but at the same time you may not be in a rush and you can save around five to six dollars. If you don't care about that five to six dollars, buy off a reputable sailor, a seller from Amazon. So they're really easy to get. So let's go ahead and zoom into these. We're gonna start with the PlayStation 4 controller installation. That'll be followed up by the Xbox controller upgrade for that. And then at the end, we'll kind of have a summary of what we think about both of them. Okay, folks, here we are zoomed in as promised. Now I'm gonna be going through the actual screwing and unscrewing in super speed here, or fast forward, I should say. But I will kind of explain what you need to do and what you need to kind of get everything ahead of time and after as far as the cleanup process. Now the PlayStation side, as I did mention, the only thing you can upgrade with this kit is gonna be your sticks. Why do you care about this? Why is it important? Well, a lot of people like having the flexibility of different sticks depending on the game you're playing. Now this does come in the format of the Xbox One Elite. So you're gonna get the concave options here. That is the smaller sides, which are the kind of thin ones here, as I will uh, put up here in the camera for you. These are the small ones. You get the convex ones, which are the round ones on top, as some people call them. These are the middle length. And then you get another set of concave sticks. These are the super long ones. Now, the cool thing about the metallic side, if you've never used an Xbox One controller, is you can literally switch these in and out. So if you're playing something and let's say you're gonna play a shooter and you want 
want something really uh, long for the kind of complexity or the detail that you can get on a longer stick, this is literally all you do. You just literally plug and play. It's literally flip, it's magnetic, it's pretty good to go. Now one of the differences on here is that the standard PlayStation 4 controller stick is very shallow, kind of really uh, not that deep as the standard uh, Xbox Ones or even the uh, Nintendo Pro Controller goes. So when you upgrade to this, you are going to have a slight taller stick even with this one. So you can kind of see, you can almost pretend that this stick is in there. It's going to be a tad bit taller. So you are going to be viewing and feeling that difference when you actually upgrade here. Now there's a total of five Phillips screws that you're going to be doing to take these off. This is the newer PlayStation controller. The original PlayStation controller is kind of a nightmare when it comes to taking off the back shell and changing things. However, this kit that we're talking about here, it is possible to be done with the older controllers. As I said, I will fast forward through this, but I did want to show you where those Phillips screws are. You got one, two, three, four. There's an additional one on the inside. Let's knock this out super quick. Okay, now there's the unscrewing part. I did want to mention how to take this apart. It's a lot easier on the newer controllers. On the old one, you had to pull these down, pull, and everything kind of came apart. On these, there's a slight pop that you will feel. If you take this off a lot, it's going to feel like you are breaking it every single time. But there you go. That's the actual shell removal. Now, once you take that shell apart, I do suggest undoing this actual plug into the actual motherboard so you can have a lot more room and space to work. So I'm going to take this out of the way. Now you're just exposing the motherboard with the battery. Also take out the battery. So here we go. Battery is now removed. You are now left with the battery carrier and the motherboard. You're going to remove this simply by pulling the side here. Okay, that comes off. And here is the motherboard kind of exposed. I did mention there are five screws that you're going to deal with. Here is the last screw right here. Go ahead and unscrew. Now what this does is it allows us to lift the motherboard up. You'll be able to take this out. Now before you do that, you have to take this ribbon right here and unplug it. This will allow you to lift the board now. As you can see, the whole board now comes out. So one of the things here is here is your Sony PlayStation 4 board. Now as you can see, what do you think you do? You're gonna simply take these two sticks off Simply undo, and now your sticks are exposed. All you do is simply line up the magnet uh, type thing. It's a, either diagonal or horizontal. You want to make sure you go diagonal and follow the stick. Go ahead and push down. Oops. All right, there's one there and make sure you have it the right angle and push down and you are literally done upgrading it from the outside. Now all you're gonna do, flip it back over. As you can see here, the, the D-pad can't be upgraded because it's a different type of technology. This right here is very different as to how it goes. Now one of the tricky things here is getting this ribbon to go through this hole when you're plugging everything back in. So let me jump in there. Sometimes you can get it to push straight through what you want to do is have it aiming up. Just kind of a quick little bend there. Don't bend too hard. But when you're pressing back in here, just literally get the screwdriver on the back here and aim it up before you push in. And there you go. So I've pushed it back in. Like I said, you kind of want to get a screwdriver back there just to kind of have it going straight up. And when you have it going straight up, it's really easy. Plug that ribbon into the board there. Pull my screwdriver down. Okay, that's now plugged in. Guess what you do? Just everything you did in reverse. So let me get the screw. Remember, five screws total. One screw goes into the main board. This is gonna hold the board in place. I will plug everything back in slow here so you know what we're doing. And then when, you, when we get to the final four, I'll do everything super fast. So putting the battery carrier back in, it literally clicks into place. It shouldn't be moving. You're literally gonna take the actual battery, plug the battery in. There you go, battery's plugged in. Last step on the actual rear is you're gonna take this and plug it back into the controller. That's done. 
And literally, you are just about done. Line everything up in the back here. Literally hear it click, and you're good to go. So at this point, I'm going to screw the four screws in the back. We're just about done. Fast forwarding, here we go. It's that easy, folks. We have now upgraded the PlayStation controller into having magnetic joysticks. So all you would do now is literally put the joysticks on and your controller is good to go, ready to play whatever game you want in that new joystick. As I did mention, the new joysticks are a little bit taller because the standard PlayStation controller sticks are a tiny bit shorter. Actually, this is a better way to show you here. As you can see here, if you line these up from top to bottom here, you can see that the PlayStation 4 controller is a tiny bit smaller. I would say almost half the length as far as tallness goes when those go in there. So here you go. You can kind of see the different sizes if you want to put it to the max. There it is, kind of looking incredibly offset there, but you can do that if you want. Now the cool thing is anytime you're playing any specific type of game that you want, you've now upgraded your PlayStation 4 controller into having magnetic thumbsticks. In my opinion, a lot grippier on the sides and easier flexibility depending on what game you're playing. Altogether, that took probably less than five minutes. If you take out the fast forwarding, it's really easy to do. I believe anybody can do it. Let's move over to the Xbox controller. Okay, let's get started on the Xbox One controller upgrade. So as I did mention when I was kind of zoomed out and showing all the controllers, there is a special thing that you need to pay close attention to when you are dealing with the Xbox One controller. And that's gonna be your magnetic sticks. And in this case, I wanted to show you the difference between a good magnetic stick and a bad one. Now you really only need one good magnetic stick and that's because the only one that causes interference is, is this left trigger will actually, sorry, the left trigger will actually be affected by the left joystick. So let me go ahead and pull out a good joystick and a bad joystick. So here we go. If you look here at the very bottom, you see this little covering right here, and I'll use this to point here, but this little co uh, covering right here protects the magnetic side of it from going down into the controller. This is a bad controller magnet. So if you see here, if you can tell the difference, one is just plain magnet, all you're doing is getting a large magnet. This one has a magnet, and if I can zoom in really far in there, and see if the camera will actually work with me can't see it too much, but there is a magnet and then there is a covering over it that there's this copper piece here, I believe it's copper, that protects the magnet from going down. So when you are taking a look at these and you're shopping for them, make sure to take a look at the inside of the joystick. If they are not showing any pictures of the bottom of the joystick, avoid it if you are buying it intentionally for the Xbox One controller. More than likely what they're doing is sending you these cheapy ones, which is just a magnet and you have a magnet side on both sides, not only the top but the bottom. And this is totally fine if you're upgrading your PlayStation controller because there's nothing to worry about. It's the Xbox controllers that you do want this. Now I have seen the difference in prices because of these having this little covering about two to three dollar difference so take a look at that before buying for your xbox controller i can't express that enough let's get started on the install here so this is a uh, i guess a generation two controller for the xbox this is when they added the 3.5 millimeter jack on there so they're uh, slightly different from the launch controllers but overall pretty much the same i'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this really quick i will be zooming uh, sorry fast forwarding on the screwing part so you don't have to worry about that and watch that total of five screws you're going to have to actually deal with so let's remove this piece here the kit itself does come with a uh, certain type of screwdriver that you need here. So it is the Xbox one. This is the blue one that has kind of this star pattern at the very bottom. So you can kind of see how these are slightly different from a screwdriver. They, there's going to be five of them. So there's one in the middle. I actually saved that one for last. That is the main one that holds your front faceplate. The ones you need to worry about are back here behind the grips. So one thing that it doesn't come with is these pry tools. You can use this pry tool. It comes with pretty much any kind of controller changing piece that you'll need for an Xbox One. If you have a tiny little maybe flathead screwdriver, you can use it there, but these plastic ones are better because they won't break plastic. The best way that I do this is I grab somewhere in the inside here, and you can kind of see the, the space that's breaking up there. I pull this apart here at the top. Now this is something that is kind of a pain. This is the worst part of doing this on an Xbox controller. And then I pull. 
as you can see here, that you have to kind of pull with some force. If you have a brand new controller, it's even a harder, uh, harder piece. So this is the only part that's kind of a pain with the Xbox controller. Once again, start at the top, make some space there, pop that, and then you're simply gonna pull. As you can see there, yeah, it makes a huge pop and they'll go flying all over the place, but no big deal. Let's get these unscrewed. So we have one screw, two screws, three, four, and five once again. I'll be fast forwarding here, hang on. Okay, so here we are back. There's a total of five screws. Funny enough, if you got your magnets out, just make sure you don't lose those screws. Stick them on a magnet for that's all you need to do. Once you get those five out, this front faceplate comes off. It's literally that easy. If you're simply replacing your front faceplate, you're done. You just put the new one on, zip them back up, you're good to go. In this case, we're gonna be doing some joysticks being added here. Let's go ahead and get started. This is actually really easy as well. So I'm simply gonna pull up one, pull up two. Joysticks are now ready to be upgraded. Once again, you do want this nice piece on the back to protect the controller. These are up and down is the way these go in there. So once you get that direction, come here, literally place it in. Other side, pull these out of the nice little pack. Make sure you're, this one doesn't really matter, but you know, if you have it, great. There's nothing magnetic behind that stick that, need, that you need to worry about. Two sticks are ready to go. Last step is getting that upgraded D-pad in there. What I like to do is use my pry tool come in this corner, simply come to the side, follow this down, pull back, pops that side. If you can go on the other side here, pop that. That's literally, literally ready to go. There's your door to the D-pad. That's how easy it is. You literally pull this out, you're good to go. New piece you're gonna be adding in there is the magnetic one. And the only difference between these two D-pads is this one has magnets in it. So once again, kind of easy, kind of silly, the differences here. But once again, you're gonna let it guide itself in there. Now there is a difference in this D-pad. If I show you here, the little pegs at the bottom are all different sizes with the exception of the left and right one. Top one's got the longest one, bottom has the shortest one, and the two, are, the two from left to right are kind of uh, middle size there. There is guides in here that will guide you straight in. So there's a guide here, here, here. There's no guide here at the bottom. So as you put this back in, you can kind of see the way it should be. The one that doesn't have anything will be at the bottom. Your tall peg at the bottom and the two left and right of the same will be left and right. Really easy there. Now all you need to do is put everything back in the same order that you had it. So the two tops here with the two little teeth that you're gonna plug them into will be at the top. You're really gonna let those grab. Make sure you don't lose your, your step here, or your place. And those grab here and you literally pop the bottom in. You're now good to go. Make sure that's tight enough. Mess around with your joystick really quick. Make sure everything's good to go. You're literally done with this upgrade. All you need to do is put it back together. Here we go, I'm gonna literally put this back on. If you want, you can go ahead and try to put your D-pad in already. Let's do that here. Let me grab this D-pad and literally put it on. It should be magnetic, you know, test it out. Make sure it feels good, make sure it's nice and tight. If it's not nice and tight, what you'll need to do more than likely is kind of strengthen this metal piece here by pushing the teeth down so it holds the D-pad piece in there. At this point, you can put the face shield on, the face plate as we like to call it, and you can start testing your joysticks out. So simply put the joysticks on there and feel it around, you know, move it around, make sure everything clicks, your D-pad feels good, everything is good to go there. Now if you feel good about everything, just you want to take these off because you're going to be screwing things and don't want that in the way, literally flip it over and start your screwing process. Once again, I will fast forward this and you can kind of see everything put together. So here we go. Okay, that's it. I literally have put everything back together. At this point, you're literally gonna put the back grips back on. Before you put those grips on, one thing I suggest doing is try a game out to make sure everything's working as it should. If you were kind of unsure about those magnets that were there before or the left trigger interference, go ahead and test a game out, you know, put it in. These uh, grips at the back are the hardest thing to do in this entire process, so it's really not that bad. But now we have upgraded the Xbox One controller to the magnetic sticks. 
It's really that easy, folks. This should take you less than five minutes, maybe 10 minutes if you're having any issues, maybe getting the grips off, um, putting those sticks on in the D-pad. Shouldn't be a problem. Once again, the only thing that I can stress the most is making sure to get those correct magnetic sticks. Okay, I hope you like the installation videos for both the PlayStation controller and the Xbox controller. As you can see here, I'm actually showing my PUBG controller on the closeout of this video. It's kind of my favorite controller right now that is not an elite controller for the Xbox. I do like the extra kind of ability to kind of have this little extra texture on the trigger. So I have upgraded this one as well. As you can see here, I have my magnetic sticks. If you have upgraded to maybe a scuff upgrade kit, you can add those on here too. They work fantastic. I did leave the standard D-pad on here because once again, I like that color on there and I'm really not going to be using this controller for any of my platformers. This is more going to be for my shooters. For the PlayStation controller, you can see here once again a different controller. This is what we use for the installation. It's a great way to upgrade your sticks. Once again, you'll have the magnetic stuff. So depending on what you're playing, maybe you want a shooter and you want a little bit more precision. So you want a taller one, you can replace it with those sticks that it comes with. Once again, they come in different colors. So you can kind of mix match do kind of whatever you want to do when you get to that area if you have any questions please make sure to leave them in the comments section below i can't stress enough how important it is to take a look at what you're buying for the xbox controller when it comes to magnetic sticks if you get those wrong sticks you're going to be playing a game and that left trigger interference is going to drive you nuts a good game to try that out on again is any of your call of duty games or anything that you have to click down to run so test that out when you're putting that together and if you've got the right stick you'll have no problems. If you got the wrong stick, you're going to have a lot of problems and you might want to go back to just using the uh, plain old plastic sticks. Anyways, once again, let us know what you think. Hopefully you found this useful. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.